knows what we need. Praise the Lord. Job 38, verse 22. Is everyone there? Amen. Amen. All right, let's read the word of God and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Share with you the thought the Lord has laid upon our heart. Job 38, verse 22. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or has thou seen the treasures of the hell? But what we want to preach about today is the treasures of the snow. So according to the Lord God, the snow is a treasure. It is a treasure. And I want to preach on this thought, rich resources. Rich resources. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Let us go to the uh, Lord in prayer, Father. Pray you'll help us today in the word of God, Lord. Hide us behind the cross. Give us strength to preach your word. Thank you for everyone under the sound of our voice that is in the house of the Lord today. Pray you are children of church. Lord, you may bless the teachers there and help us today. Thank you for Vacation Bible School yesterday, Lord, and for all those that helped out. Lord, it was a blessing. And we thank you for that, for the kids. And we know something was instilled in hearts, especially the little boy that we talked to yesterday. Lord, it had came last year. Father, and had a negative attitude toward Jesus Christ. But then his attitude changed this year, Lord. Oh, what a difference one year can make in a child's life. And Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. Help us today, Father. We need to strengthen our church, help our nation. These things we ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name and for his sake that we do pray. Amen. You can all be uh, seated. Rich resources. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? The snow. So we find according to the word of God, there are rich resources God wants us to learn from the snow. Rich resources God wants us to learn uh, from the snow. Now I have about six of them this morning that I want to share with you, and I pray there will be a help and a blessing. It don't matter where you go in God's Word, it's a blessing. There's just not one part of it is, and that's the best part. No, all of it's good, amen. All of it's good, praise the Lord. But we're looking at rich resources. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Now, first thing that I want to show you in the Word of God today is the provision of snow is a treasure. The provision of snow is a treasure. A lot of these things I did not know until I studied it, found out some statistics and different things about snow that I never knew. Amen. But we find the provision of snow is a treasure. He said in Psalms 148 and verse number 8, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. But he mentioned snow in Psalms 148 and verse number 8. The provision of snow is a treasure. Two things about the provision of snow. Number one, we see the depository of snow. The depository of snow, the word treasure is a storehouse. It's a storehouse or a depository. It carries with the idea of a God storing up snow and dispensing it where he chooses. Putting up snow and dispensing it where he chooses. Scientists tell us that snowflakes are actually born in clouds containing moisture. The condition must be right for it to take place. Who controls the conditions of the atmosphere? Who created the clouds? Who makes the storehouse? Who dispenses the snow at his choosing? If God is in control of the snow, and he is, and if God can dispense the snow upon the earth, and he can, cannot he dispense all things in this life that we need? Amen. If he can do that with snow, what can he do for you and I? Amen. What can he do for us? Amen. What he does with the snow. Now we find that uh, not only do we see the depository of snow, but the doctrine of it. James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and it cometh down from the Father of lights. The reason why he's called the Father of lights, because according to 1 Timothy, over there, I believe it's 6, 16, where he's in that immortal light. He is that light, amen, sitting on the throne in heaven at his right hand is the Son. But that's that immortal light. That's why he's called the Father of lights. The Father of lights with whom there's no variables, neither shadow of turning. What that means is God stays on track. 
God's right on line. Everything's going just the way God wants it to. Amen. Praise God. And God will take care of us. Amen. Because God is in control. So we see the provision of snow is a treasure. We see the depository of it. We see the doctrine of it. But number two, we see the peculiarity has peculiar. The peculiarity of snow is a treasure. Not only provision of it, but it's peculiar. First of all, number one, snow has different shapes. Y'all knew that, didn't you? Snow has different shapes. Did you know that there are many different shapes of snowflakes? There's ten general categories that snowflakes fall into. Under a microscope, you can see some snowflakes look like needles. Some snowflakes look like stars. Some snowflakes look like little trees. Some look like little fish bones. Some snowflakes look like little bullets. Yet, here's the amazing thing about them. No two snowflakes are exactly the same. No two snowflakes are exactly the same. Snowflakes have their own shape. They have their own identity. They are each unique, the snowflake. Well, let me say this. People are like snow in this respect. Of the billions of people upon the earth now, those who walked here previously and those who will be born into this world, there is not ever, have there ever will be two people that are just alike. Everybody's different. We were having vacation Bible school yesterday in Park invited some of our friends and these two girls were twins. Now, you know that they were sisters, amen, because they look just alike. And I got to talking to them. I said, Parker, they look just alike. She said, yeah, they're identical twins. I said, they might be identical twins, Parker, but I said, they have different fingerprints. She said, yeah, I already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> they know more than what we think, don't they, amen? She said, yeah, I already knew that, amen, but of all these similarities and all these distinct characteristics that separate us from everybody else, our fingerprints are unique. Our footprints are unique. The pattern of our eyeballs are unique from anybody else. Now, what does that say, amen, about God and us? Well, first of all, that we are different. God made us that way, and we find deity shaped us that way. Man, God's deity, he shaped us that way. Like snow, we have a designer. We have a designer. What, what are things of value? We are special. We have a creator that knew us before we were formed in the womb, who knit us together distinctly, amen, from all others before us. But like snow, not only do we have a designer that designed us that way, we have a distinction about each and every one of us. Snow has more of a purpose than just, amen, to grace our landscapes with beauty. We can see God's purpose even in the smallest things, amen. Even in the smallest things, surely God has a purpose for our lives. And that's our destiny. But then there's our distinction. I don't want to leave that out. We're not only distinct in the way that we look, but God has a distinct purpose in each and every one of our lives. Don't forget that, God. You're not here just by accident. You're here by the divine will of God, and God saved you by His grace. He knew when you were formed in your mother's belly, amen, what she would be, when you'd be saved, and everything else. And He's got a purpose for your life. There's more to life than working a job and going to the house, amen. God didn't form us there. That's just a necessity. We have to do that. God made us to glorify the Son of God, amen. Amen. Glorify the Son of God. We find that. We have our different shapes. We have our deity shapes us because God has a purpose in our life. So we see, number one, the provision of snow is a treasure. Number two, we find out the peculiarity of snow is a treasure. But number three, let me say this, the purity of snow is a treasure. The purity of snow. Scripture, Psalms 51.7. Purge me with hyssop. This is David talking after he sinned. He says, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Snow. 
Snow has a powerful cleansing effect on the atmosphere. Sometimes they call it washout or snow out. Snow is actually formed around some matter already existing in the atmosphere. It could be a little small piece of dirt. But we find we are wider than snow because there is no dirt in us after his cleansing. <laughs> when he gets done cleansing you, he'll get it all out. He says in Isaiah 118, Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as what? Snow. They shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That is that deep, fixed sin, amen, with no human power that could remove it, shall be taken away. In other words, your sins shall be pardoned, and your soul shall be made pure. Why in all ages has been the emblem of innocence and purity emblem and purity amen so we find here our scripture teaches us that but not only scripture we find our sins we have been corrupted by sin america is corrupted by sin america has been corrupted by sin now we see it see it started back yonder when i was coming up as a boy it hadn't reached p p potential like it has now but now it's getting there. And it's not grown up all the way yet. It'll grow up during the tribulation period. It'll go to its extent during the tribulation period. And God will cut it down. The Bible says he sends an angel with a sickle. He says the harvest is right. He sticks the sickle in the harvest and he cuts it down. We have been corrupted by sin. We cannot conceal the stain of sin. Sin has a stain to it. And we can be cleaner than snow because God washes us whiter than snow. So we see the purity of snow is a treasure. Let me say this here. Number four. The productivity of snow is a treasure. What did I say? Snow, snow produces some things. Amen? Snow produces some things. We see our scripture, Psalms 25, 13. I mean, Proverbs 25, 13. As the cold of snow... In the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. We see the scripture, then there's the success. Now scientists tell us that snow picks up nitrogen in the air when it's formed. And then it dispenses it upon the earth. And it melts. And it melts, thus aiding the productivity of the ground. Snow makes an impact. It has influence. Snow does. God wants our lives to be productive, not destructive. The Christian life is to be productive, not destructive. Amen. We don't have to be destructive. You already got one that's doing a good job at that. He came to kill, steal, destroy. He's destructive. Now we find productivity begins with the Father. As we read earlier, James 1, 17, the father of lies. Snow originates from God. It is dispersed by him. In order for our lives to really have purpose, for us to be productive, it begins with a relationship with the father. You'll never be productive in this life until you've got a relationship with the father. If your life's always stayed the same, you better look out. Amen. When I got saved, my life changed. It went from going that way, and I started going that way. We weren't churchgoers, amen. We done everything under the sun, but when my life changed, I started going in a different direction, brother. Hey, listen, and it's productivity. It's like snow. It comes from the Father. I got saved. I have the Holy Spirit. Where'd you get the Holy Spirit at? I got it from the Father. <laughs> he sent a comforter to me, amen. And he lives in my heart. If you're saved, he lives in your heart. Praise the Lord. Productivity begins with the Father. Then productivity continues when we fall upon our knees. It comes from the Father, and then when we fall upon our knees. As the snow falls, it becomes larger. It picks up ingredients in the atmosphere, which are useful on the earth. We become more productive in, productive in our lives when we fall on our knees. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Right. Amen. That's where it starts at. 
if we will humble ourselves and pray. Amen. Can't nobody help this nation but you and me. Well, that didn't work. They can't do nothing. <laughs> it takes you and me as God's people to help the nation. That's what you're here for. You're not here to waste space, take up time and everything. God wants some productivity out of your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Productivity continues when we fall on our knees. Productivity begins with the Father. Productivity climbs with faithfulness. He said in John 15, verse 4, Abide in me. And I in you. What does that mean, preacher? Stick with stuff. Amen. Don't, listen, somebody talks about you or says something. My goodness, that ain't nothing. Amen. I've been talked about it ever since I got saved. Dear God, when I got saved, they said it wouldn't last. Yes, sir, I heard that all the time. It won't last. He'll be right back doing the same thing like the rest of the crowd does. Amen. The rest of the crowd might be doing it, but I ain't doing it. Amen. Praise the Lord. People are always going to talk about you. People always got something to say. That's just the way people are. Amen. But always remember this. When they're talking about you, they'll let somebody else rest. Amen. Don't ever forget that. Ain't no excuse not to serve the Lord. John 15, 4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Christ said, if you want to be faithful, if you'll be faithful and abide in me, you'll produce. You'll be a producing Christian. Amen. And he's looking for fruit out of every one of our lives. Amen. He's looking for fruit, brother. And it won't get it at the house. You got to come here. Because you're not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That is a command in the Word of God. You won't get past that at the judgment seat of Christ. He knows, he knows how, how, how many times that you've been here. He does. It's not for me. I'm not your judge. I'm the pastor. I just, I just bring the message. Amen. And try to keep war from breaking out in the house of God. Amen. Because we're all different. Remember? We're all different. We're all snowflakes. Every one of us is different. <laughs> but God can take those backgrounds no matter where we're from or what we've done. Amen. God can put it together and make harmony out of it. Amen. So we find snow. We see the provision of it. It's a treasure. We see the peculiarly, has peculiar. That's a treasure. We see the purity of snow. That is a treasure. We see the productivity of snow. That's a treasure. It produces. But number five, we see the power of snow. The power of snow is a treasure. Praise God, I got one backing me up. Power of snow is a treasure. We see two things about it. The recreation of it and the resources of it. Power of snow is a treasure. Number one, the recreation of it. We usually look at snow for its beauty. We look at it for its beauty. For its recreational purposes, skiing, snowboarding, all that. I like you snow for that. So as we find the power of snow is a treasure. It, treasure, it has a recreational purpose. But it also has a resource purpose. Seldom do we think of snow as being precious or being a precious commodity. About 20% of the world's land mass is covered permanently by snow. In the northern hemisphere, it is about 40%. Fresh snow falls on one out of every four square miles of dry land each year in the northern hemisphere. One third of the world's water used for irrigation comes from snow. In the western United States, nearly 75% of water for irrigation comes from snow. Snowfall flows on the scene is the most useful times of the year. It is stored in higher elevations until the latter spring and early summer. Then it melts in time to help the irrigation of the crops. It is snow that powers the rivers of the west. The Rio Grande, snow. The Colorado, snow. The Missouri, Snow, the Columbia, snow. They are powered by snow and the melting of snow. How much water is produced by snowfall in a year? It is estimated that melted snow, listen to me now, produces 26 trillion 
gallons of water along each year in the Columbia River. Who does that? God does that. Amen. God controls the weather. God controls the climate. I don't need some man telling me I got to quit doing this. I need to quit doing that. I'm destroyed. It. You ain't going to destroy nothing God made. God set it up. We, we got something in the Bible. They call it the jet stream. But God had it before they ever named it. Amen. How it circles and it comes around. It circles and it comes around. God made this planet. And he put it together. And he knows how to make the rivers flow. He knows how to go to the banks and it don't go no further. God made it all. Amen. Not some lunatic that thinks he knows everything. Amen. He got so much education, it's corrupted himself. Hey, listen, I went to Bible college. I didn't, number one, I didn't go to Bible college to learn how to preach. I was preaching before I went to Bible college. Bible college ain't going to teach nobody how to preach. You've got to be called to preach. Right. Amen. Amen. And number two, let me say this. When you get there, you learn a little bit, but you don't learn that much. Amen. You're better off just staying at the house. Amen. But I went through it anyway just to get that little piece of paper so I can say that I've done it. Amen. Bible college ain't going to teach you nothing. What's going to teach you something is to get in the book and study it for yourself. That's what's going to teach you something. Amen. Amen. So we find the resources. Let me say that again. 26 trillion gallons of water each year in the Columbia River. That's enough water to cover the state of Kansas knee deep and it's enough water to raise Lake Michigan six foot. That's a lot of water, brother. Where are they getting that from? God. <laughs> God's doing all that. I don't see man out there trying to produce nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we find snow. God can use something as small as a snowflake as a source of power. Snow helps control the depth and the current of the great rivers out of the west. God has the power to change us. If he can power a river, he can change me. And he did. He changed me. There ain't no salvation without change. Ain't no such a thing as that. That's not biblical. Salvation without change is religion. Religion takes you to hell. There's a lot of religious people in hell right now. They, I done this and I done that. And I done, that's law. Law is I done this and I done that. Grace is it's done. Somebody did it for me. What I could not do for myself. <laughs> Amen. He did it for me, brother. And he changed me. And I still believe God can change people's lives. I still believe God can truly save people and change their lives. Amen. And their lifestyle will change and their talk will change too, brother. Like he said this morning, we don't come in here at uh, Sunday school and we keep our oh, we got good clean mouths and we got down and we start cussing. You got a problem. You better check it out. Amen. You can't clean that mouth up. You better come to the altar and find what your problem is. Amen. He cleaned mine up. I cuss with the best of them. Amen. I don't cuss no more. God saved me. Amen. Amen. This Indian used to speak with forky tongue. He speak right now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Instruments to affect change. Instruments to affect the current. Instruments to affect choices. Amen. It all comes from God. The power of snow is a treasure. But in closing, let me say this. The passage of snow is a treasure. The passage of snow is a treasure. Snow is precious. We'd like to have some today, man. <laughs> It'd be nice, wouldn't it? That'd cool it down a little bit, wouldn't it? Praise God. Some snow. Snow is precious. Especially to us here in Tennessee. We like to see snow. It's only here for a short time, but it melts away. It melts away. Scripture, James 4, 14. Whereas you know not that what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor. It appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away, just like snow does. It appears for a little time, then it vanisheth away. Like snow, we do not remain. We are not going to remain here. You're not going to remain here. Like snow, we do return. You're going to return, he told Adam. He said, from thus thou art, from thus thou shall return. Cremate it, it don't matter. You can cremate it and spread it everywhere so he'll never find it. He'll put every piece back together. 
cremated, it don't matter. People come to me and say, well, so and so's uh, going to be cremated. I look at them and say, well, I don't know. Hey, listen to me, folks. God's going to raise it up whether it's a body laying there that rots and goes back and, and the worms eat it up or whether they cremate it and it goes to dust, he's still going to raise it up. Now, I believe some people, and I may be wrong, some people think by doing that cremation, God ain't going to find them. God's got, listen, God's ready, listen to me. God already knows where the soul is. And putting a body back together ain't no problem. Amen. Now we got Snow is not only precious, and we see the scripture, but snow is changed. Snow changes from solid to liquid to vapor. From solid to liquid to vapor. As snow is changed, you that are saved and myself will be changed. As snow is changing, you're going to be changed. What do you mean? 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. Anytime in the scripture you'll find where he says sons of God is because God is male. God is male many years ago. It's a long time ago. I flew from uh, North Carolina to Jer Jersey. One of our guys had broke his arm. We, we were all in the in-home in delivery. And up north is where you made the money. I mean, they tip you like you wouldn't believe. So I get on the plane and fly ready to take his place. Only got to step there Thursday and Friday and come back Saturday. I get to the airport and I go up there. You know how southern boys is. I got my God shirt on, Jesus and all that. This guy walked up and said, hey, hey, guy. Have you heard? I said, what? He said, God's a woman. I said, he is. I said, yeah, haven't you heard? Where are you from? God's a woman. God ain't no woman. God ain't no woman. Amen? Amen? Let us make man in our image. Amen? God's male figure. And he's got a son. And his name's Jesus Christ. But he said, beloved, now we the sons of God, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Ain't nothing wrong with northern people. We got a north, northern boy sitting back yonder, amen. He was born in Yankee, but he's a good old boy. He, he's southerner in heart. Amen. We like him pretty good around here. Such treasure is the snow. Amen. Snow that can help us see the Father. We are much greater value than even snow. God wants to wash us, clean us to the point that we're water. It's no. Salvation changes your, it is a radical change. It is a change in your life when you receive Christ as your personal Savior that the very next day after you get saved, no, got saved in the morning, that at 7 o'clock it's time to be on the job. I go on the job and the first thing, that's when I knew there was something different about me. I said, a little boy start talking to me. You know what he said? See that guy over here? I said, yeah. He said, you, you, you was filthy yesterday and talking dirty. Go over and apologize to that man. I had to go over. He said, what? He looked at me like I was crazy. What? I said, yeah, I got saved last night. He said, oh, oh well. He said, go in your superintendent's office. Tell him. Went in there, closed the door back. He said, I, don't, I, don't, I want you to know what happened to me early this morning. He said, he said what? What? I said, I got saved. Well, he didn't say nothing. He started doing his fingers like that. He said, well, oh, that's good. Then I went to another one and told him. He told me all kind of stuff that he thought I did. And finally I had to stop him. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I got saved. I knew that there's something different about me. I don't do this right here. I don't go up to people and uh, ask them to forgive me and, and all that and stuff. But God had changed me. God had changed me. God had changed my nature, and God had saved me. Amen. And thank God that he got a hold of me because the road I was heading, it was not a good one. It was not a good one. But I'm glad that we're like snowflakes, folks. 